Hey, Sarah. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> How are you? Doing pretty good. I want this quick day. Yeah, I'd love it. Thank you. I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff on the screen. Hmm? Just give some context to what we are seeing, and you're going to react to it, and you're going to talk to each other. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my god, this is from another update. Oh, I love the hoglands. I just love the atmosphere. Oh, what forest. This was uh, my first Minecraft update, and I remember my first day at Mojang. Okay. Back then we had a, a whiteboard, and it had uh, kind of the plan of the oh, Nether yeah. update along. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And it felt like I was being let into the secrets. Mm -hmm. It's like, ooh, I, I know what's going to turn out. Yeah, exactly. This so was good. also the first time we introduced proper ambience, ambience um, sound particles. ambience yeah. in each biome, so you could exactly. go throughout the biome and, and, and actually hear the space. Crimson is so hectic and there's always enemies and always dangers mm -hmm. and so much lava and everything. And the the warped forest is a lot more calm and quiet, yeah, a like bit weird. desolate. Yeah, right. warped, I guess it's the Very word. warped, exactly. When we worked on Edrapt, it was like, okay, so now we, gonna make a place that feel n not at all like our world, not at all like the real world. We want it to be alien. So it was very fun to create completely unique uh, like moods and, and atmospheres and challenging. We were kind of struggling at the time with another update to try and inject a little bit of that survival gameplay loop that is already in the overworld, but make it feel different. So if we just ended up creating some sort of uh, boat that you could craft, then it might feel a bit too much like the overworld. We wanted to go in a different direction, and so we thought of the whole concept of the Strider. That was a lot of uh, Brandon's personality. He wanted to make them look kind of crazy and yeah. with the hair sticking out. I have to say, though, I feel like every time I, I jump off a Strider, I immediately fall into lava. <laughs> <laughs> All the other stuff was super important to us because a lot of the story of Legends and the enemy of Legends is um, these rowdy little pink critters there, not the zombified ones, but the piglins. And I know from also having spent some time with you and your team for dungeons as well, because you went. You went to some of these places in dungeons too. Oh yes. It's always so cool when we can have multiple games that kind of inspire each other and right. help building on each other. How does this biome look in Minecraft? How does it look in, say, dungeons or a spin-off game? Yeah. Caves and clips. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at how absolutely gorgeous this is. I love the lush cave, especially like the vegetation and just like how vibrant it is. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> I was playing Minecraft the other day with a new friend that hasn't played in like six years, and they saw the goat for the first time, and I was like, look, this is the goat. Yeah, we added it. It's so cute. And then they looked away for just one second. They got pulled off the mountain. <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yes. I have found one axolotl in all of my survival world. Really? The most axolotls I've seen is always in creative. I'm always flying around, oh, of course, 100 axolotls. <laughs> in survival, I found one. I made the mistake of putting them in my aquarium. I think they eat the fish. Yes, they do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Agnes, and today Henrik and myself will talk a bit about the Kids and Clips update and why we have split it into two releases. Yeah, I mean, this is, of course, when we made the decision to split the Kids and Clips update and um, I mean, it was it was an interesting time for many different reasons. This was a rough time in general. It was during the pandemic. It was right? a, we were all in a weird place. We got the information, okay, everyone should work from home, but it's just going to be two weeks. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was such uh, high expectations in the community. Like, it had been a, a discussion point for a very long time of, like, the cave update, the cave, cave update. update. It really felt like we as a team had to do something that lived up to the expectations that the community had. People working from home, they're going to be putting far more time in than yeah. usual because they yeah. can't disconnect. The, their Definitely. development machine is right next to them. So I remember just waking up and immediately on the computer talking to people yep. and I'd be there until late at night. I remember it uh, quite vividly, like uh, we did team health checks. We saw that the stress levels were going up and the happiness levels going down. So it's much better to make sure that the team feel as good as possible and are as happy as possible. Because then we then we can be happy and be creative and, and create a good game. She's gonna hear this, we're talking about her, but I know it was hard, it was very hard for her. It, it was tough. The feeling mean, of letting, letting the community down. Seeing the community 
understand and respect and prefer a healthy way of working and rather than, come on, please give everything right now. We don't care about what happens later. Yeah, it's hard to even express how much that meant to us that the community really understood and really showed support. And I'm still thinking about that sometimes. And I'm, it was, it's a, it's a very big moment for me overall because I, it, yeah, it was scary. And then everyone was amazing and that, mm, thanks. The wild update. <laughs> wild update. <laughs> and this is the first time that we really started to get proper yeah. uh, animations. You worked on the frog animation. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. I just wanted it to be a cool animation, mm. like for the new generation. Yeah. So I made this walk cycle that had his feet uh, planted on the floor, like it actually grounds the character in the in the world. And it's, it's got this like swagger, like this strut. And people loved it and they made it into a, a sort of attitude. And we also embraced it and made it into a music video later like mm -hmm. for Minecraft mm -hmm. Life. Mm -hmm. I did not uh, particularly work on this update, but I know as an artist, I always uh, really appreciated, uh, especially the vegetation in the mangrove swamps. Another thing that I really love about that update is the mangrove trees. Ooh. Trees, not trees. Can you say it like in mouth? <laughs> mangrove trees. <laughs> mangrove. <laughs> This is one of my favorites because the first time I saw the team internally show the deep dark as aspect, mm -hmm. the deep dark, mm -hmm. it was scary. Mm -hmm. I mean, proper scary. We spent so much time talking about like how scary is Minecraft? What is Minecraft scary? Like yeah. just taking the time to talking about feelings. That was a big thing with this update though, was kind of evoking the classic Minecraft. Yeah, exactly. We, we always want to go back to our roots and we, we all played Minecraft back in the day. Um, so we like to kind of reach back to the parts before each of us joined Mojang. Yeah, like exactly. What did we enjoy? And the ancient city as well has some sort of like you know, like lost civilization vibe. Yeah. Like what happened here? It, it was the biggest structure, like in terms of just its breadth, how how wide it was generating on the ground. And now we're seeing uh, my little baby, the oh, lays. One of my favorite features about it that I feel like not many people saw, it's like one of those small things that you might miss unless you play a lot, a lot with them, is that when they throw an item to you, they throw it one by one, and they uh, make a sound on the throw that it's slightly pitched different every one. And if you have a bunch of alays, their sounds will sync in a sense that they sort of create this choir playing music for you as they throw item to you. And I love that. Default player skins. To me, that's a big thing in Minecraft that we finally added a more diverse pool of skins, basically. Being able to identify yourself with how you look mm. in the game mm. is important, it's meaningful. Yeah, I really like the red thread metaphor here of carrying the torch, basically, right? It's been Steve and Alex carrying the torch for so long, and now we have new friends helping to carry the torch. It's showing what, what Minecraft is, uh, stands for in this you know, a, a better world where you communicate and collaborate with uh, many different people uh, and they all look different and they identify differently. And then at the end, you see something beautiful that is being created by everyone. I cried when I saw this for the first time. Oh. Mm. Trails and tails. It came with archaeology, camels, sniffers, some new plants, cherry trees, which are, of course, are absolutely beautiful. Definitely had to explore some different storytelling with uh, archaeology and how we could represent some different storytelling with like iconography and everything. I was very impressed by uh, how much research the design team did on archaeology to make it real. It's not just like, you know, kind of see it in a movie and you go to a dig site and you uh, uncover an ancient relic kind of thing, like went out and talked to archaeologists and, and did the work to find out what makes archaeology so fascinating in the real world and then figure out how can you make that fun to play uh, here. I actually went home during working on the camels and had a, a trip like with my friends riding camels again because we used to ride camels a lot when I was a kid 
and of doing it again and sort of getting reminded of all their fun sounds and fun weird ways of movement and stuff like that, that we really try to bring in that feel of riding a camel into the game. With uh, the sniffer cheese animation work and everything is just amazing. It's, yeah. uh, it's really cool seeing the sniffer in action and seeing it dig and seeing its ears like flop around and everything. It's, uh, it's a very charming mob. I heard the sniffer was difficult because it was so big. It is huge, but luckily it's a sort of slow kind of like lumbering, lumbering, is that yeah, the word? Yeah, yeah, lumbering, um, yeah. So it works out in the end. What has been the impact that Mojang and Minecraft has had in your life? Oof. I mean, it, it is completely unimaginable. I know people who are in the community who have now created their own small ecosystems or in small, small communities where they've literally met up in person. They've gone on like trips throughout Europe and stuff to go to different countries. And like, it's not special to working at Bojang. You just have to be playing the game and find people that you, you kind of vibe with and yeah. you, your whole life changes as a result of just playing Minecraft. For both of us, we started as, as players and like, Players played a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and then I think working with Minecraft was this dream that felt impossible. For the future of Minecraft, I hope that we can grow the sort of Minecraft universe. Yeah, I think there's a, a feeling of responsibility to keep Minecraft going. Uh, I don't think there's a problem with shortage of of ideas, but how do we do them right, and how do we keep the spirit? the same, so that if we were to log in 10 years from now, it would still feel like Minecraft. Keeping a lot from what has been from the previous 15 years, because I think there's something really magical and amazing that sort of happened here that none of us really completely understand either, right? I think it's not really clear how this thing that we love so much happened. But isn't that the thing with Minecraft? Like, it's, it's much bigger than than us. My ideas of what Minecraft is, is different to the people that worked on it 10 years ago. But that's because of all the foundational work they did to begin with. There are going to be new people who continue to come in and essentially adopt this game, adopt this experience. And I want to make sure that we treat it well, and that we have sort of this passing the torch moment where um, what we've done prior is enough that they can continue to carry on that torch with the same passion, with the same feeling of what Minecraft is, but it has to evolve. I think it was uh, Dinnerbone who said, you know, we want Minecraft to be here for a hundred years. Yeah. It's going to be first hundred year franchise. Just aging like a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I think the future of Minecraft, I hope that it still keeps true to how it felt in the beginning. Yeah, but better. But, but better, better. <laughs> yes. Ha, ha, ha.